Here's Puddle Jumper. We've come across an ocean. We're gonna see how deep it is. Not even up to the top of the wheels yet. Yeah, but that's not the dip. The dip yeah, yeah, I know, you know. Hot stuff, baby. Hot stuff. <laughs> wow. Well, I know you can't see me very well. I'm sitting in the dark by the campfire. My wife is over to my left. And my buddy Chris is over here in the dark. Waving. I'm waving. He's, he's waving. <laughs> Apologize for the light conditions. But we swamped the buggies. The buggy will not go in the water up to your armpits. <laughs> the guy on the video that commented, that wasn't deep. This was deep. And it said, no more. Anyway, we're waiting for some guys to come and pull us out. And we were lucky there was a skew warming shelter not far. So we're sitting and they had some wood out in the shed. And we're grinding off a little bit. Needless to say, the floor is completely soaked. Yeah, the floor is wet. <laughs> it's still raining outside. But we did have a good meal earlier, so we're not hungry. And, we're and I might have to change the oil on the buggy. And probably you'll change my belt while I'm at it, since it's probably full of water too. So we'll see how it all works out. And we went swimming with beavers. And the beavers were not happy we were in the water. <laughs> they were slap happy. Anyway, enjoy fever. the adventure. Fever, fever rules. <laughs> hey. Hey everyone, how's everyone? Well, just getting home from work. Uh, Saturday, we decided to go for a buggy ride late afternoon. I didn't bring the camera because I knew we'd be coming back in the dark. And the GoPro 7 Black doesn't work well in the dark. And we were going the rail bed, so the trail wasn't gonna be too, too bad. But then we decided to come home after we ate our supper through the old trail from Nakawick to uh, Green Hill Lake. Well, that's when everything went crazy. So, as you can see, we came home on the trailer. Well, we drove this trail in the last couple of years I would say uh, half a dozen to a dozen times and part of the trail there is beavers but not where we ended up and uh, this was another spot 
and the beavers had done their work. And like I say, we've gone through this section of trail up to a dozen times in the last year, and even three or four times this summer. And I'll just say that, uh, I'll just say that the water was a little bit deeper than we expected. Um, the last time we went through, the water might have been two feet to 30 inches deep. Uh, this time, it went deep very fast. Uh, not what we were expecting whatsoever. And we swamped the buggy. So, I'm going to try to de swamp her here. And the Terex is. Uh, as you know, it takes quite a bit to to uh, get to the belt. And I think I'll do a belt change. Oh, sorry. Hey, it's almost off. Push this off. Watch some few videos on doing the trying to get. All right, sorry for the camera view. Anyway, just about to pull the plug, see what the oil looks like. I imagine it's gonna be milky as I'll get out. Don't wanna drop the plug. Let us see what kind of situation. Oh, it's full of water, look at that. That's all water. Eh, not good. Not good at all. The Milky Way. Uh, well, I'm gonna tell you, swamping the buggy was the last thing I wanted to do. Yep. So here's my plan. So my plan is to let this drain out. I'm going to take the filter off. I'm going to fill the filter or flush the filter out with some diesel fuel. Try to get the water out of it. Put the old filter back on. So some of the guys were using diesel fuel. So I'm going to do a flush with diesel fuel. Maybe a couple of them till it stops getting milky and get all this crap out of it. And then I'm going to do an oil change with just regular cheap oil with 10W30 and I'm going to put some uh, sea foam in it. Try to get all this crap out. Meanwhile, what I think I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to uh, start taking the stuff off the passenger side to get at the belt. Uh, I don't need the belt on it to belt on it to uh, let it drain. So pull my ropes out. I'm gonna take all this stuff off. You guys know the Terex is how much crap you got to pull off so I think what I'm gonna do is unhook the trailer go down the shop get my pin puller take all this stuff out get at the belt try to get at the 
spark plugs, drain the spark plugs, crank it over a little bit, get all the water out, and hopefully everything will be good. I am the water was up to here. So there was a lot of water in here. So well over where we wanted to be. And uh, anyway, you play with fire, they say you might get burnt. So anyway, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna strip her all down. I think I'll change the belt while I got her apart. And we'll give her a good cleaning later. But anyway, stay tuned. I will show you more. So let me just share with you. The last thing we wanted to do is swamp the bug. So we're going to take the seat out. Sorry for the noise. The seat she's going all right pull these pluggy things out a pain in the butt and there's lots of them you're gonna buy a terex or probably doesn't matter what kind of side by side you might as well go buy one of these tools because there's thousands of these rigs and realistically a person probably should keep it in the machine because if you uh, if something happens that you need to uh, change your belt on the trail you're gonna need to pull crap load of these out 1047 let's see how long it takes me to so the oil is all drained I'm gonna crawl under there and take the filter off like I said I'm gonna Probably rinse the filter and put it back on. Man, I have to say, it is amazing how well they hold. Okay, so I'm hoping, take that wire off, so I'm hoping that my fuel is fine, because I did put the uh, fuel line vent in, uh, and I just did that last week, so
lot to take apart and water in there so I'm not sure I'm going to have to go look at the manual because I think you're supposed to be able to take that belt off without taking the clutches off but we're not sure all right I've been at it for an hour or so it's uh yeah, about an hour. So I got so I got all the dash stuff apart. Got the cover for the belt off. I'm gonna put a new belt on while I got it apart. I think I'm gonna take the snorkel off here so I can get at the spark plug on the back side. I'm blowing out some of the dirt so I don't get no dirt in the in through that. Um, there was water in the belt, which was no surprise where the intake is um, I'm assuming there's gonna be water in this and so I'm gonna keep working away at it get the plugs out spin it over a little bit make sure there's no water in it there is water in the air breather right there so what I'm gonna do is get the shop back and vacuum that out so I don't suck any more water in it's a lot of work to get at what you need to get at and uh, not worth it but I'm gonna tell you I'm probably gonna snorkel this bugger because um, this isn't gonna happen to me again might lose some stuff and it'll be a custom snor snorkel but uh, not that I go looking for water but this water hole wasn't deep the last time we went through it and it was deep this trip so you never know you get caught started all right I'm gonna start it just to run the oil no why I'm not done no but I can start it it ain't gonna hurt you well how would I know that you don't know where my hand is well I'm starting the engine the engine's in the middle all right, all right we're gonna start her get the oil circulating it won't start without a gas tank all right, we changed the oil four times. Now we got the good oil in. We had an issue, wasn't starting unless I pressed the gas pedal and it was giving me an engine light, but we got that figured out. And now she starts good. turned out there was a wire off the coil when I pulled the plastics off here I pulled the wire off this coil back here so that's what it was got it figured out now we got the belt off sorry I could have showed that to you got those here belt looks in really good shape there's nowhere that it slipped that I can see Clean up the clutches, throw them out, clean up the housing, and start throwing this bad girl back together before it gets dark. That's good practice. <laughs> yeah. So Neil and my wife Heidi are just finishing up, cleaning up. Neil come out uh, just a little bit before supper, brought me a socket to take the secondary clutch off. Uh, Heidi cleaned up the buggy as much as she could. We got her all back together. 
I would show you uh, the buggy, but it's so dark you can't see it. Had a little issue when I first put it on. Tried to start it up, it wouldn't start unless I gave it throttle. Uh, come to find out, I checked the code. It was code 51. I Google that, and uh, I called the dealer and asked them what code 51 was. Anyway, by before they called me, I, I noticed I pulled a wire off one of the coil packs for the front cylinder. So she's running pretty good now. New belt, new oil. That had five oil changes today. So she's all flushed up pretty good. So we're ready for this weekend. We're going on a two-day trip in the Sussex area. We're going to have a great time. A friend of mine's left uh, letting me use his camp. So we're going to rough it a little bit. And have a good time. Hopefully the weather's good. And Neil and, and John and his their wives are going to come out. And Danny might even grace us with his presence on uh, Saturday. So we're going to have a good weekend. The buggy's back together and we're good to go. So till the next adventure. Later. Wheel of trucking guy clear.